what's up guys Dave here from CNC 3D so today we're going to be doing a very simple video on how you can do a beautiful detailed 3D carve we're going to be covering the absolute basics that you need to do in order to do a wonderful 3D carving on some nice hardwood we're going to keep this video pretty short and sweet for most of you this is going to be probably your first 3D carve and this video is targeted towards people that are thinking about doing one for the first time we're going to show you just how easy it is. As you can see on our desktop here, we've got the three versions of the Carveco software suite. Today we're going to be using the entry level version of Carveco, which is called Maker. It costs about $15 US per month or about $19 Australian. And if you get in touch with us, we can even give you an awesome 5% discount on your subscription for life. So please have a look in the comments and you should see a link for that in there and a coupon code that you can use. So let's just jump straight into it. So let's go ahead and launch the Maker version of Carveco. Now, the first thing that we want to do is we want to create a new model. So let's click on new model. Now, the first thing I want you to do is to enter in your dimensions. So this is the dimensions of the work area that you want to work in. So we're gonna keep this carving nice and small. So let's just make our overall canvas size or our work area 150 by 150 mil. We're gonna leave our resolution here at 1000 by 1000. If you've got a better computer with a really good graphics card, you can obviously make that a larger number if you want, but 1000 by 1000 is gonna work out pretty well. Now we're gonna stick with millimeters here, so we're gonna keep this option selected. So all we need to do now is just click on OK. Now, as you can see here, we've got our 150 mil by 150 mil canvas right in the center here. And just a quick little note on the right hand side here, this is your project explorer. This is where all of the aspects of your project are going to go. But let's just go ahead and jump straight into doing a 3D carve. So some of you have probably stumbled across some beautiful CNC 3D models online, either via eBay or via Etsy or other websites. And today we've already got one which is titled Queen Bee. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut out this Queen Bee 3D carving out of some beautiful Australian hardwood using our Nighthawk controller and one of our Queen Bee CNCs. So let's just jump straight in. In order for you to first of all do a 3D carve, we need to import a 3D model. So we'll go up the top here to Relief, and then we'll go to Import, and then we'll go to Import 3D Model. Now we're just gonna choose our Queen Bee model here and just hit Open. Now in this first window that's popped up, as you can see on the left-hand side here, we don't have anything showing right now. So the first thing we need to do is get our model up to the surface and let's set it to the size that we want it to be. So by default on the right hand side here, you can see that our X size is 3.8 mil, our Y is 3.4 and our height is half a mil. So this is tiny. So let's just go ahead and we're gonna make this 120, which has now automatically changed the Y and the Z to keep the scale. So if we hit apply now, you can see that our model is way below our canvas here. So we wanna get it up on top on the surface. So let's just hit this center button and then just hit it again, just to make sure it's gonna go right on the surface. Now, if we wanted to, we could go ahead and do this 3D carve immediately just as it is. But what we're gonna do instead, just to save a bit of time for the purposes of this video, is we're gonna decrease the size of the height of this model a little bit but still keep the overall dimensions. So Carveco will actually squash this one down for you and the easiest way to do it is on the right hand side here, you've got this link Z checkbox. We're just gonna uncheck that. And we're just gonna reduce this down to 10 millimeters, just so it's a little bit more stout than it was originally. Let's hit apply. And as you can see, it's squashed down our overall STL. This is gonna make for a much faster carve for the purposes of this video. So let's just hit the center button again, just to make sure it's sitting right on the top. Now that we're happy with this, just hit the paste button here. Now, if we close out of this window, we can see that we have our beautiful Queen Bee model here on our canvas. Now, just some quick navigation tips with Carveco. If you hold the mouse wheel in, and you move the actual mouse, you can see that we can pan the model. 
and if you hold the shift key while holding the mouse wheel in you can actually drag the whole model around and of course you can roll the mouse wheel to zoom in and out of the model so let's just go straight in and start doing this 3D carve. Now, traditionally, 3D carves usually are a two-step process. The first thing you would normally do is a roughing pass, and then the next step is to do a finishing pass where you use a really fine tool to get all of that beautiful detail out of your model. So we're going to jump straight in now and set up our roughing pass. But what we're going to do, which is a little bit different, is we're going to create a little boundary around our model just so it really stands out when we go to do this carving. So the first thing we need to do is just to create a vector which will go around our 3D model. So to do that, we go up the top to Vector and then go to Create and then go to Relief Boundary. And just hit Create Boundary on the right here. Now you can see we've got this pink line traveling all the way around our model. So we are going to use this particular pink vector is going to be used for our finishing pass. But now what we want to do is we're going to create a separate vector which we're going to use for our roughing pass which is going to give us a little bit of a 5mm standoff from our actual carving and really make it stand out a lot more when we go to carve this. So to do this now, we're going to keep this vector selected so it's still in pink. And we're going to go up the top to Vector again. And then go down to Offset. And if we have a look on the right hand side here, it's opened up this window. Now we've already got an offset distance of 5mm in here. So we're going to keep this at 5mm. And make sure that we select Outwards slash Right. And in here, just hit Enter. And as you can see now, it's created another pink vector that's traveling 5mm all the way around our actual model. And so that is going to be a nice flat bottom that's going to accentuate our 3D model on our timber. So now that we've done that, we can close out of this window here. And the first thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and set up our roughing pass. So we can choose, if you wanted to, you could click on this inner vector that you created or this outer vector. We're going to do our roughing pass on this outer vector and then we're going to do our finishing pass on this inner one that we created. So now that we've selected this outer one, all we need to do is go up the top to Toolpath and then go down to New 3D Toolpath and then go to Machine Relief. Now you'll notice here that the first option you have is Area to Machine. Now we don't want to do the whole relief. The whole relief would be this entire background here. Instead, we just want to work within the boundaries of this pink vector that we've created. So let's just click on the drop down here and go to Selected Vectors. Now the first thing that we want to do is we just want to run a roughing pass on here, not a finishing pass. So we're not going to choose an option in this finishing options section now. Instead, we're going to choose an end mill from here. So let's click on click to select for the roughing options. And you'll notice here we have our CNC 3D turbo cut end mill range. If you guys would like a copy of this, it will be available on our website shortly. So you can easily import this into Carveco. And that way you'll have access to some great default feeds and speeds for our CNC 3D turbo cut end mill range. And hopefully should help you guys get some great results when you're doing your 3D carvings. So for this roughing pass, we're, we're going to use a much larger end mill to remove the bulk of our material. So we're going to use a two flute straight cut with four mil cutting diameter. And... You can leave the default settings of this for hardwood if you're using one of our Queen Bee CNC's. We have tried our best to put some good feeds and speeds in there just to make sure that you guys are going to have great carves. If you are using, say for example, one of our U-Carve CNC's, you may want to look at changing some of these values just to decrease, for example, your depth of cut or your width of cut that will suit the U-Carve a little bit better. But you can definitely do this as well on one of our U-Carves. It's just going to take you a little bit longer. So now that we've gone ahead and selected our two flute straight cut 4mm, just hit select. And if you look down here, you can see that it's got a couple of default options that it wants to run through. 
we're going to leave the standard raster here as our tool clearance strategy. We're going to let it automatically do our Z slices. And we are going to select ramping. So you may not have this option ticked right now, but we're going to choose to add ramping in here because we find it just leaves a better finish on your material as opposed to just plunging straight down into it. So leave that selected and we're going to leave all of the default settings on here that CarveCo has selected. We're also going to leave our safe Z with what CarveCo thinks is correct. And the only other thing to do now is basically just to define our material. So let's click on this blue section. And as you can see, it has determined that the material thickness is 9.99 mil. Now this specifically relates to just our 3D carving in general, but we actually want to tell it that we're using some 35 mil Australian hardwood here. So let's put 35 mil into this box. Now by default, it wants to set the model position right on the surface of the material. And we actually want that to happen because we don't want it to have to go all the way through this top section before it starts working on our model. So let's just bring our model all the way to the top, which is the default option, and just click on OK. Now, if we hold our mouse wheel down, we can see our material and where it's planning on putting our actual carving. So now that we've gone ahead and done that, let's give this a name. So we're going to call this Roughing B. And let's just hit calculate now. And there you have it. It's created our toolpath that it's going to run for this 3D carve. So now we are basically just going to go to the right here where we've got our project tab. Or we can choose to close out of this offset vectors window. So we'll close that. And if we now expand our toolpaths option here, you can see that we have our roughing B toolpath that we've just created. So the next step from here is we're just going to close out of this machine relief window. And on the right hand side here, next to where we see roughing B, you'll see we've got these yellow lights. What we're going to do is we're just going to click on that and that will actually hide our toolpath on the left hand side. If you click it again, then it will show the toolpath. So we're just going to hide that for a second. Now we've basically set up our roughing pass at this point in time. So it's pretty much good to go. The next step from here is we're going to now create another toolpath, which is just going to be for the finishing pass of our model. So what we need to do is just select our inner vector so that it's highlighted in pink. And we're basically going to follow the same procedure. So we're going to go up the top to toolpath and then go to new 3D toolpath and then go to machine relief and now what we want to do is we just want to add our finishing option the first thing of course is we're just going to select selected vectors from this list to make sure that it's only going to look at the actual model from within this pink boundary around our carving so now all we need to do is choose a suitable end mill for doing a carve now some of the best end mills to use are tapered ball nose end mills. They will give you the best results when you're doing really detailed 3D carvings. And today we're going to be using a 0.5 mil two flute tapered ball nose end mill. So the very tip of this end mill is only half a mil wide. And by default, we set ours to have a 7% step over, which means that it's only going to travel over from the previous cut 7%. And this should give us quite a nice finish, but we'll add a little bit more time to our carving. But let's just select this one here. And now what we want to do, we're pretty much going to leave all of these settings exactly the same as before. So all we really need to do now is just go down here and let's call this finishing B and then hit calculate now. And there we go. So it says one plungers could not be ramped. Do you still want to ramp this toolpath? Now this is entirely up to you if you wish to do this. As you can see, based on the picture, it's pretty much going to do the whole thing for us, except for these two little areas here. Now we're going to say no to this in this case, and we're going to deselect ramping for the purposes of this actual carve. And the reason why is we don't want it to miss any little bits and pieces as it goes through this carve. So in this, in this case where it's given us this alert, 
let's just untick add ramping and just hit calculate now and so now that's gone through and it's accepted that one and now if we look on the right hand side we can now see our finishing B toolpath here now if you want to you can actually go and view these as well so the best way to do that for example with our roughing B we'll have a look at that one first so if we right click on roughing B we can go to simulate toolpath and if you have a look here it's given us a visual representation of how our actual carve will look after it completes the roughing pass now if you want to do the same thing with the finishing pass it works the same way we're just going to right click on this simulation and go delete and then now we're going to right click on our finishing B toolpath here and just go simulate and if you have a look now that definitely looks a lot more like our 3D carving and what we would expect it to come out like so it's looking pretty good we're pretty much ready to go ahead and export these now and get them loaded onto our Nighthawk so the first thing we'll do let's export our roughing B toolpath so we're going to right click on it and go save as as you can see here on the right hand side it says toolpaths to save there's our roughing B we're going to save it in this folder which is C users David OneDrive desktop B and we're going to call it roughing B now for the machine file format if you're using a CNC 3D Nighthawk controller, we definitely recommend selecting this CNC 3D Nighthawk post processor. This one will be available in the next release of Carveco, but we'll also include a link where you can download it off our website. In the meantime, you will notice there are two different CNC 3D Nighthawk post processors. One says CNC 3D Nighthawk millimeters. The other one says CNC 3D Nighthawk spindle millimeters. And the only difference between these two is if your spindle is being controlled by your Nighthawk, you would definitely choose this CNC 3D Nighthawk spindle. But today, our particular Nighthawk is not controlling our spindle, so we're going to get it up to speed manually, and then we're going to tell the job to start. But if you do have your spindle being controlled by your Nighthawk, definitely choose this option. It will add a 10 second delay after turning the spindle on, just to give it time to get up to speed before it tries to plunge into your material. So for the purposes of this video, just choose the CNC 3D Nighthawk millimeters and just hit save. So the system could not find the path specified. Would you like to create it? So we'll say yes. So that should make the folder on our desktop called B and we'll just close out of here. Now what we'll do is we're gonna save our finishing B toolpath as well. So let's just right click on that and go to save as. And just as we did before, we're just gonna select it from the list here and we're gonna call it finishing B. And again, we're just gonna make sure that we have our CNC 3D Nighthawk millimeters post processor selected and just hit save. Now we're pretty much good to go at this point in time. You could choose to close out of Carveco if you wanted to so let's just minimize that for now. All right, so now let's just go ahead and launch our CNC 3D Commander software. And guys, if you do get this message appear, please say yes for us. It definitely does help us out to try to get this fully approved by Microsoft. It is digitally signed by us at CNC 3D. So please say yes, it'll help us out greatly when you're launching Commander. And once Commander loads, the first thing that we're going to do, we're going to connect up to our Nighthawk CNC controller, which is on our network. So let's just change to IP. We've already got the details loaded in here. So let's just hit connect. All right. So now we're on our main, main Nighthawk controller here. Let's just hit refresh to see the files that are on there. And the first thing that we're going to do, we're just going to upload these files that we've just created. So let's just hit upload job. Now you have to do one at a time, so let's do roughing B first and hit open. And once this completes uploading, let's just go through and load on our finishing toolpath as well. So we'll hit upload job and choose finishing B and go open.
Do, do, do. And perfect. So now if we have a look, we have both of the files loaded onto the SD card of our Nighthawk. So let's just go ahead and go into the workshop and we're going to start carving this job. Okay, so here we are. We've just gone through. We've inserted our roughing pass end mill into our spindle. Now the first thing that we need to do with the Nighthawk, because we've just turned it on for the start of the day, is we're just going to access the interface for the Nighthawk 102.168.1.155. Perfect. We're just in an alarm. Let's just clear that to go back to normal. And let's just go ahead. First thing is we just have to go and home our machine. <laughs> Okay, perfect. So now that we've homed our machine, all we need to do, let's just speed up these jogging functions a little bit here. Let's go 3000 millimeters per minute for X and Y, 1000 for Z. Let's just go and clear our, clear our clamps here. And let's take that across 100 mil. And another 100 mil. And let's go 10 mil. Okay, that's looking like a pretty good spot. Let's just start to lower down our Z. And now we're getting close. Let's get our paper underneath there. And let's just nudge this down a little bit until we start getting close. Okay. Alright, let's go up. So we're going to go up point, point 0.1 of a mil. Yeah, down one maybe. Down one mil, point 0.1 of a mil. Perfect, we are on the surface of our material. So now we're pretty much good to go. All we need to do now is to fire up our spindle. Now the most important thing to do here is we just need to go back up the top here. Now that we're in our zero position, we do need to make sure that we hit zero job. And we have to make sure that these job coordinates are definitely set to zero. We don't need to worry about the machine coordinates and what they're doing. This is the most important thing. So now that we're at zero, we're just going to wait for our spindle to get up to speed and then we should be good to go. So let's just prepare for that. So if we scroll down here a little bit further, this is where we're going to have our list of files. We'll just hit refresh and we'll scroll down a little bit here and we're looking for our finishing pass in here so there's our roughing B file so our spindle's almost there and now we're good to go so let's just hit play on roughing B now is our job has successfully completed our roughing pass it's now returned back to the zero position so what we're going to do now is we are going to put in our tapered ball nose end mill for the next part of this 3d carve all right let's go ahead and do that so here we have our turbo cut tapered ball nose end mill it's a 0.5 mil it's 15 degrees and it's got a four mil shank. So 
let's put this straight in here. Alright, so the first thing we need to do is we need to put in our new cutting tool that we're going to be using. So, uh, our spanners over here. Let's get this first one on. slide in our new cutter. Perfect. And as usual we'll go in as far as we possibly can. It's looking pretty good. Now what we need to do is the same process. Alright, so there we are on our carve. Okay, so when that roughing pass completed, it's now moved our bit in the exact same XY position that we started in, but it's given us a little bit of an offset here. And so what that is, we'll just have a close look and see what it's done. So it has set our Z to 30 point, let me have a look here, 30.345. So we know that from where the old bit was, that's where the bottom was. Now this is no longer relevant in this case because we can't guarantee exactly how high we've put our new tool in. So if we go back over here and take a look, what we need to do now is the same thing. We're just gonna lower down our Z until we get to the right distance. So, let's put this here, if we can, for the video. Whoops, we'll put it up here. All right, so what we wanna do now is we wanna basically jog our Z down until it touches in the exact same position that the original one did. So, we're, we know we're 10 mil off, let's go down 10. And again, let's zoom in here a bit, make this a bit easier. So let's go now. One, two, three. That's feeling pretty close. Let's go point one, point one, point one. Alright, and that's grabbing. So that is now our new zero position that we're going to start the next half of this job from. Alright, so what we want to do now is we want to try to zero these job coordinates out quite well. So at the moment, as you can see, it was 1.6 mil the difference. Let's just hit zero job. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to start up our spindle and then we're going to run our finishing pass. So let's do that now. Let's see what we've done here now. We're just going to grab our vacuum cleaner 
and tidy this up a little bit. Let's just jog this out of the way. Alright, so let's take a closer look at what we have here. And there we have it guys, with a little bit of sanding and tidy up, this thing will look absolutely beautiful. But not a bad effort here, a little bit of fluffing, that's all we really need to fix up. Other than that, a beautiful 3D carve, some nice solid timber. There you go guys. Okay, so... As you can see, our 3D carving is now completed. It's looking good. Now the time's come for us just to go and give this a bit of a tidy up. So what we're gonna use, we're gonna use one of these bristled brushes. Now, this one's quite soft, but you can use some that are a bit more abrasive. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna rub our carve and get in all of those nooks and crannies. And let's see if we can get rid of some of this excess sawdust buildup that are in all of these tight areas where there's a lot of detail on our carve and we'll just come along and loosen all of that up okay that's starting to look pretty good now now we have to do is just go ahead and get our vacuum cleaner out and just give this a quick vacuum Okay, so that's looking pretty clean and tidy. And you can definitely see the definition that we have here in our, in our wing is looking very, very nice. That has a beautiful texture to it. So it's a very nice timber. So there you go, guys. That's pretty much how you do a 3D carve in a really quick and easy way. This is some beautiful Australian hardwood timber. Ideally, when you want to do these carves, you want to pick a timber that's nice and hard and ideally one that has a very tight grain. As you can see, there's a couple of little veins here that have come through on the timber. So if we had something with a bit of a tighter grain, you'll find that you'll get a lot less splitting. I hope this really helps you guys out. For a lot of guys doing their first 3D carve, this can be really, really daunting. So yeah, enjoy guys and make some really cool stuff and feel free to share it with us.